Okay, hi everybody, welcome to today's event. I'm Jason Gumpert from msnmsworld.com and I'm pleased to welcome uh, the team from True Commerce to today's event all about cloud EDI best practices. Our presenters today are Ryan Handley and Steve Norris. And uh, before I hand off things to them, I'm just gonna uh, go through a couple of uh, notes on housekeeping. So please do enter your questions as we go through today's event. Uh, you can use the Q&A block you should see just to the right of the main presentation area. If you can enter those at any time, I know Ryan and Steve will be making time at the end of the session to answer uh, all of your questions. We're also recording today's event. Uh, so without any further delay, I'm gonna hand things off to Ryan Handley to get us started. Thank you, Jason, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate you guys taking a, a chance or taking some, some time to uh, to evaluate really the, the cloud EDI best practices with Dynamics 365 for operations. So uh, without any further delay, I'll go ahead and jump into our presentation. As an introduction to true commerce, you may have heard of our parent company, HighJump. HighJump provides a whole suite of interconnected supply chain solutions, and true commerce provides the commerce network to connect our clients with their different business partners. So this could be connecting suppliers such as yourselves to big box retailers via EDI or connecting our clients with their suppliers who may or may not be EDI capable. Our supplier enablement solution really extends the traditional automated EDI workflow into a singular process regardless of your supplier's technical capabilities, uh, whether that be you know, them being EDI capable, XML, CSV, some other flat file, or if nothing at all, we extend a portal for them. And then to you, again, all looks like they're following through that same automated EDI workflow. And we also have e-commerce solutions to extend shopping cart functionality out to B2C and B2B customers. And all this is using that, that commerce network, that true commerce network, which then connects into our different ERP integrations. And then today we're gonna to be discussing uh, Dynamics 365 in our cloud first solution. But first, just a little more background on True Commerce. I won't spend too much time here, uh, but as you can see, we have a global footprint with over 10,000 customers exchanging 600 million transactions annually with a library of over 23,000 mapped trading partners. And we'll touch on, on those mapped trading partners just a little bit later. Specifically around Dynamics, we're a gold certified partner and a Microsoft managed ISV partner. Uh, as a member of the Microsoft Development Council, we work hand in hand with Microsoft as they give us pre-releases of future versions of you know, what was Dynamics AX, now 365. Uh, we then provide our feedback, which makes its way back into the Microsoft GA or public release. So getting more to today's focus, uh, kind of what we're hearing in the industry is we work closely with our prospects and with Microsoft partners. We have a good pulse on the dynamic nature of IT strategy and really just thought leadership. Uh, and what we're hearing is that companies want to focus on their competitive differentiators uh, rather than becoming experts at things like managing complex EDI mapping and compliance requirements. Uh, as companies continue to invest in cloud-based technology solutions for their business as a whole, they want to complement this strategy with a managed services approach to EDI or trading partner connectivity. From a technology perspective, they don't want to retrofit any on-premise solutions that require that heavy IT infrastructure to quote unquote work with their new cloud-based ERP. The point of moving to the cloud is offloading the management of this IT footprint and using a more scalable model to handle costs associated with uh, with the growth that our clients are really striving for. In doing so, our clients need a simple path for future upgrades. As we see our customers moving from AX to 365, they stay connected with all their trading partners and simply switch the integration portion of their EDI solution, which has been tested and developed in conjunction with Microsoft. Because of our embedded approach, there's no need to duplicate customizations you may have made to your 365 environment. Um, and again, you know, staying in, in step with Microsoft means that we can deploy our solution using the Microsoft lifecycle services. As our customers continue to evolve with the ever-changing economy and internet-based retail, 
they look at us as advisors who've helped countless companies make that transition from a more bulk-based fulfillment model to the more rapid and complex dropship model. So this is true from an EDI perspective, but we also draw on our team's experience on the warehouse side of our company as well. So again, kind of as, as we see our, our customers and, and, and their requirements continuing to evolve, we definitely see a difference in kind of more specifically in EDI terms, how that has an impact on sheer volume of transactions uh, and having to pick kind of those ones and twosies, those drop ship, uh, those drop ship orders, uh, and really what that means from an ASN, uh, an ASN requirement perspective as far as shipping legables. Um, and then again, kind of tying back to what I spoke on earlier on the supplier side, really bringing that visibility as to when you purchase, uh, when you purchase the actual uh, goods that your customers are, are, are buying, you can have visibility into that tracking information and pass that off to your customer as soon as possible. That really helps on your vendor scorecarding when you have customers, big important customers like a Walmart or a Target, uh, they're really looking to you to provide that visibility so they can alert you and I, the consumers, to say, hey, your shipment's on its way. We're able to provide that data because our vendors can now provide that information to us as well. Getting back to really that cloud first versus uh, that cloud first versus traditional model, um, I'm not going to read every bullet here, but what I do want to touch on are just a few points. Being a cloud first solution is different than having a SaaS billing model. Partnering with a cloud first organization is more than just offering a subscription based payment model and calling it SaaS. It allows you to leverage the economies of scale of any of our clients that are trading with a specific supplier customer, 3PL, instead of us recreating and managing a Walmart map on each one of our clients' on-premise installations, we're plugging into our cloud-first solution with those requirements, those compliance requirements, already baked out. So what that means is quicker time to value, lower cost of adding that new customer, that new supplier, that acquisition of, of that new 3PL, and really a quicker ROI for you. Traditional solutions also leave some questions to be answered by your organization. Do you install it in Azure? Do you still retain some of your on-premise uh, servers, any of that infrastructure? How do you get the data to your D365 instance if you choose to have that hybrid approach? And do you have the visibility if the transaction process is successfully in your EDI solution, but the data never really gets to D365? And what are the costs involved in retrofitting a current on-premise solution to a new cloud-based ERP? From a cost perspective, a cloud-first EDI solution is very straightforward. You pay once for our team to set up the infrastructure and your ongoing costs scale effectively as your volume and your trading partner community continue to increase. So what that means as well is that we're, because of our predictable path to implementation, we're able to offer a one-time fixed fee for implementation compared to on the traditional side of things, there's typically a little bit more risk because it's a one-off type of a project. Uh, you're doing and delivering all the mappings on premise. And this is something that typically means we're going to give you an estimate of how much time it's going to take and therefore how much you're going to need to spend with us compared to a cloud-first solution that has a predictable deployment uh, path uh, and, and also can provide that certainty with that fixed cost bid for, for the implementation. You no longer have to think about adding staff to support your growing needs, both from an order processing perspective as well as IT to support the additional workload. Because we're connecting cloud to cloud, the sky's really the limit as far as throughput. This isn't the case with a traditional solution where you have to think about adding servers, contemplate disaster recovery strategies in-house, and really just kind of coming up with that strategy as a whole. Um, so again, not only are you having to manage that, but you're paying resources to do that as well. A true managed service is, is really, again, more than a subscription-based billing model. We're connecting the people, the processes, and the technology to manage all the technical aspects of infrastructure and EDI-specific mapping and communications. We are your EDI department. IT staff is no longer responsible for triaging every single EDI error that comes through. 
we're, what we're trying to do is empower the business users to focus on what they're get, good at, that customer relations, that customer service. They understand the customer. They don't need to understand the complex data segments and elements that make up an EDI transaction nor do they need to have to work with your own IT staff to figure out why this communication didn't take place. You know, why did that transaction not even come through in the first place? We're doing all the heavy lifting when it comes to mapping and compliance and communications, and we're passing that file already translated in, a, in, in, in business-friendly, uh, human-readable format. So again, that, that customer service representative is able to do their job without having to involve anybody else. So I wanted to take a minute here just to kind of walk through our, our typical integrations and what that workflow looks like. When you're purchasing from your vendors, again, this can go out via EDI or possibly some sort of a portal. Depending on your vendor's EDI capabilities or technical capabilities, could be that EDI X12 document, uh, could be sending this document out to a portal that your vendor can then view. Uh, but the point is that order is going to get off to your vendor. And we're going to let the warehouse know, hey, we just sent this order off to our supplier, and they should be delivering this, these items on this date to your facility. Your vendors can then give you a heads up as far as their ability to uh, fulfill that order in the form of a purchase order acknowledgement. They can send ASNs, and they can finally invoice when the time is right. At the same time, they're shipping that product off to your warehouse, off to your 3PL. And when your 3PL gets it, they're going to go ahead and acknowledge receipt of that. On the customer side of things, your customers, those big box retailers, uh, pharmaceutical, no matter what your industry is, that X12 EDI order is coming in. Also, as I mentioned previously, we do have that B2B portal or that B2C portal that follows that same EDI pathway. So again, regardless of, of technical capabilities of really any of your different trading partners, we're able to take a look at that order, import it in using our EDI or our embedded integrations into the Dynamics 365. We can then send an electronic pick ticket off to your 3PL to let them know, please pick, pack, and ship this product to this customer, at which point they're going to come back with the shipment advice that we can then send to the customer to say, your order is, is arriving at your facility Here's the different tracking numbers associated with it. Uh, here's the different labeling, so on and so forth, um, kind of completing that, that chain, obviously invoicing, getting you paid quicker with an automated EDI workflow. If we take a look at kind of the diagram, the components that make up uh, any EDI solution, but more specifically our EDI solution, there's going to be a communication gateway. And so this is this is our TC.net network. Uh, could be a variety, if we're talking about customer-specific requirements, a variety of different communication methods. Some customers or 3PLs or vendors like to communicate via uh, FTP, secure FTP, AS2, VAN. The point is what we're doing as part of a managed service, we're managing that point-to-point -point communication on your behalf. Regardless of the way they choose to communicate, it's flowing in through the TC.NET network and going through our EDI mapping. And now these are where we manage our trading partner-specific mapping. I mentioned earlier we have 23,000 uh, to choose from at this point. When you add that Home Depot, when you add that next customer, we're able to drop that mapping in creating a one-to-many type of relationship, we're normalizing that information in Transaction Manager and using our integration map to build that sales order in Microsoft Dynamics 365. I'm going to pass things over to Steve here quickly for kind of a, a walkthrough of what this looks like inside of Dynamics 365. Uh, but just quickly before that, Dynamics 365 and our integration map uh, has configurable business rules. So. Uh, when we're talking about, you know, what do we want this actual Home Depot order to look like inside of Dynamics 365, our implementation team, going back to our repeatable process of deployment, uh, one of the first steps is, is going through a full detailed business process review. This is where we learn how to configure our embedded integration to your specific environment. So as we look at the EDI mapping and we look at adding that next trading partner, we're really just dropping in our compliance map that we've created and we've used thousands of different times. 
when we're normalizing that, vol that, that, that data in Transaction Manager, and then we have catered specifically to your organization how that works in Dynamics 365. And again, this is an important part when it comes to a managed service and a cloud-first type of a solution, is that we're not having to reinvent the wheel each and every time you add a trading partner. We're not having to go to our client A over here and install our Walmart map and then do that as a one-off when client B of ours decides that they also want to add Walmart. We can do that once at the network level and then cater that specific integration map to meet your specific requirements. Again, all based on that business process review that we do as part of the implementation. One note that I'd also like to make uh, on this slide right here is that maintenance and support is all covered under one roof. We're not, we're not outsourcing integration, mapping, translation to any type of other third parties or any type of ISVs. We're really doing this all in-house with True Commerce, and that you're not charged extra for maintenance or support. That's all included from the time that your customers or your trading partner sends you the transaction, all the way to the point that gets in Dynamics 365. You're working with one integration uh, or one one partner, True Commerce, and we're managing that whole cycle for you. You have visibility throughout. Again, from a technology and architecture perspective. Having a, a cloud-based solution uh, is something that you're not really having to pay anyone internally to monitor. So when we talk about what does this data do internally, where, what does our translator look like? Is it sitting on this server? What's the maintenance associated with that server? Uh, what happens when something goes wrong? Do you have a disaster recovery, sign, a, 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 that disaster recovery plan? So the point is here that we're, we're your team that's really focused on making sure that, our, that, that your infrastructure is not something that you're having to waste time or babysit. This is something that's all hosted uh, within True Commerce, and we're managing for you on your behalf. With that, I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Steve to give us a tour of our solution inside of Dynamics 365 and inside of Transaction Manager Online. What I wanted to spend time you know, what I wanted to spend time doing with you guys today is really just just spending some time, you know, spending some time talking about our EDI solution that is deployed in Dynamics 365. One of the nice things about our architecture and the way we've designed the solution is it's quickly and rapidly deployed using lifecycle services. So you're not having to worry about spinning up additional servers. You're not having to worry about, install, you know, the different hardware, you know, hardware and software requirements that there may be for the application. It's simply deployed quickly via lifecycle services so that it gives you very quick time to value, and you're not spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to install third-party applications and how to make those applications talk to each other. Our solution is 100% embedded within Dynamics 365 for operations. We've really become the Dynamics 365 operations EDI module. So right inside where you might be interacting with your accounts receivable transactions or your accounts payable transactions, you're going to be able to see our EDI module directly from within there. And whether you're working with suppliers, whether you're needing to exchange transactions with your customers or with a 3PL, all of this is able to happen within the locus of control of Dynamics 365. So users that are in customer service or in procurement or in inventory control can operate using a system, Dynamics 365, that they're already familiar with. They're not having to be trained or learn how to use other third-party products or anything along those lines. Everything they can interact with is directly from within Dynamics 365. So if we're going in and we're starting to take a look at what we have visibility to and what we can do within the system, one of the nice things about being embedded solutions, you don't have to worry about permissions control. All the permissions are controlled directly from Dynamics 365 for operation security rules. So you can control who has access and who doesn't have access using your standard security rules. It ends up being really nice because you're not having to try to figure out, well, who has access to certain databases, what accesses they need to other applications. Um, things along those lines are going to be areas that are going to help. And then also we leverage, you know, from an automation perspective, being able to, our goal is to put you in a position where you can manage things by exception. 
So you're not spending every day trying to remember and trying to train somebody to go in and take a look at transactions and manually process them through the system and have somebody remember to go in a couple times a day and run orders or send invoices. We leverage the Dynamics 365 for Operations Batch Server in order to be able to schedule those events. So the same events that you're probably using today or we'll use as you go live on Dynamics 365 to schedule things like invoice batch posting, that same exact utility is what you're going to be able to leverage from an EDI perspective. So you can see that, you know, you can see that we're fully leveraging all of the capabilities that are part of Dynamics 365 for operations. And from within Dynamics 365 for operations, we're giving you visibility into what's happening across the system. So we look at something simple and we think about, you know, we think about, you know, being able to process sales orders from our customers. Traditionally, and other models, if you wanted to be able to reprocess a document, if you wanted to be able to have visibility into what the content of a particular transaction was before it ever touched the ERP system, you'd have to go out to some other third-party product, pull it up, and you'd have to, you know, you'd have to try to remember how to find it in there. We give you full visibility to what's happening across the system directly from within D365. So if I wanted to be able to go in and look for, you know, some outstanding orders that have errors or transactions that have been previously processed, if I want to be able to see you know, what orders have I ran over the last month or year or the last couple of weeks or just content for even down for a specific trading partner, what's nice is you have that visibility directly within Dynamics 365. And it leverages things like the save search functionality and the filtering that are a part of Dynamics 365. Also leverages the personalization features as well. So if you wanted to add more fields here, whether that's a field that's in D365 or a field from the EDI document, so you have better visibility or you need visibility to different pieces of data. You want to sort or filter differently. These are all things you can control. And again, you have access to directly from within Dynamics 365. What's nice, too, is this where you can go to manually process transactions. If you didn't want to run in an automated or an unattended mode, you can delete and archive transactions from here as well. But more importantly, you're going to be able to go in and see the contents of a transaction. Whether you want to be able to go in and figure, you know, whether you have someone on your staff that knows how to, you know, knows how to review the actual EDI transaction, we give you visibility to that, but also more importantly, we understand that there are folks in your organization, those folks that are in customer service, inventory control, procurement, that don't, you know, that don't have that decoder ring to figure out where in the XML or where in the EDI or where in any kind of content data is that. They just want to be able to look at it in a predictable format that's easy to read if they have any questions. We have the ability for you to go in and look at that, those transactions in a formatted view so that you don't have to be able to decrypt any of the transactions that you're receiving. You can see in a nice, easy to read format. That same mailboxing functionality is available across the product. So whether we're talking about sending purchase order acknowledgments to your customers, invoices to your customers, or even if we're talking about sending an order out to your supplier community. Again, whether that's EDI or XML or CSV or that's out to a portal that they have visibility to, all areas that we can help you with and all areas that we're interfacing you know, we're able to interface directly, you know, from Dynamics 365 with. What's nice about all, the, all of this functionality is, is since it is embedded, as Ryan had mentioned, it does inherit customizations that you guys have. And ideally, in scenarios like where you might need to send an advanced ship notice, we're natively integrated with some of the, you know, with some of the leading WMS solutions that are on the market, but we're also integrated with the advanced warehousing pieces that are in AX, that are in AX or Dynamics 365. What that means to you is that you're not in a position where you're having to duplicate building content. You're not having to create pack out information within Dynamics 365 and then duplicating that over in another EDI solution. We're able to pull the content directly from your warehouse management system in order to be able to send that content down to your trading partner community to limit scenarios where there might be read keys, data entry errors, things along those lines. We also have the ability to provide things like item catalogs out to your trading partner community. 
The interesting thing about item catalogs is a lot of times you don't want to show to your to your customers everything about what's in inventory. Maybe you only want to show what inventory is in a specific location or a specific site or a specific warehouse. Maybe there maybe there's a scenario maybe there's a scenario where you only want you want to be able to hold some safety stock or you only want to report 50% of your inventory. Maybe you never want to show somebody that something's out of stock for fear they might pull it from their website. These are different business rules that we're able to work with you and configure so that, that, so that that's taken care of and you're not having to go in and manually manipulate a bunch of catalogs before you send them down to your trading partner community. A lot of the e-commerce sites that you, that you may work with, whether you're working with maybe a homedepot.com or an amazon.com, or Lowe's.com, or you know, really any of the e-commerce sites. What's interesting is they're you know increasingly in need of this catalog data. It's what they're using to determine whether, when we go on as a consumer to the site, whether the product is you know whether to show the product is back ordered or maybe it's not available to be shipped via Amazon Prime, things along those lines. And there's an increasing need to be able to provide that catalog information in a timely manner. If not, if not a couple times a day, definitely every day, maybe at the end of every week. But what's nice is you can put that on a schedule so you're not having to think about, okay, it's Thursday, did I send my catalog out for the week yet? Or it's, you know, I need to send three catalogs a day. You don't have to worry about somebody sitting around and trying to remember to send those. We, can, we leverage the Dynamics 365 batch server and batch processing in order to be able to schedule the sending and receiving of that. Again, a quick deployed solution that's going to be available to you that's paired up with a managed service solution that's able to be deployed via lifecycle services so you can quickly and easily get to the, va to the value that you're looking to drive by being able to integrate content from your suppliers, your customers, and your 3PLs, whether they're using EDI or they're using XML, CSV, Excel, or any other kind of document type, or even if they need a portal to be able to do that, these are all areas that, all areas that True Commerce can help you with. We pair all of this up with our cloud-based managed service solution, which gives you a lot of added value, because if your Dynamics 365, for instance, heaven forbid, is down, you're going to be able to continue doing business with your EDI customers, suppliers, and 3PLs, maybe even transportation carriers, you're going to be able to continue to have business continuity using our transaction manager solution. So if, you, if your D365 environment was down, but you need to get people in the warehouse up and working, you're going to be able to see all your orders directly from within the transaction manager interface and see the health of the solution even if you don't have access to Dynamics 365. Paired up with this is our automated reporting. So being able to go in and generate reports, not only being able to manually generate them, but being able to automate the reporting. So we look at reporting in two different ways. We think about reporting it from a summary level perspective. Those reports that are going to be important to those folks that are in management or maybe the executive team. Maybe they want to be able to say, hey, at the end of every month, it'd be nice to know what our order totals that came in via EDI was for that particular month. And maybe they don't want to see that by trading partner. Maybe they want to see that across your entire trading community. And if we're looking at summary type of data, I don't want to see it as a list. It ends up being too long. If I'm doing thousands of orders a day, which quite a few of our customers are, I don't necessarily, an end of the month report that's just a list of the transactions doesn't really help me. So maybe I don't want to see it as a list. Maybe I want to see that as a pie chart so I can understand what percentage of business I'm doing with each of my trading partners to better understand, make decisions, and pivot as needed in particular areas. What's nice is these reports can be run ad hoc. They can be saved and recalled. But more importantly, they can be saved associated with an email address, a group of email addresses, and a schedule, so that you don't even have to remember to come in here and run the reports. So you may say, hey, at the end of the last day every month, I want these three reports emailed to these six people that make up our management and executive team, and then you don't have to remember to go in and run them. 
that becomes of an added value when you're talking about task-driven reports. These task-driven reports are going to be important to the folks that you have that are working with the with those different peripheral areas of your supply chain on a day in and day out basis. Whether that's customer service, whether that's procurement, whether that's inventory control, this is what's going to help them do their jobs. What's nice about this is you can look at things like which transactions have I sent down to my trading partner community that they haven't acknowledged yet. One of the common problems you see with a traditional solution is that you lose visibility once the transaction has been sent, meaning that the transaction could have gone off into a black hole somewhere, and you don't and you don't know until you're working with your customer or your supplier, and it's too late. What I mean by that is we've probably all been we've probably all been in a scenario where we've reached out. We've all been in a scenario where we've reached out to try to collect on an invoice from one of our EDI customers, and it's past our payment terms. You know, we're sitting around 120, 150 days later, and we're trying to collect on an invoice, only to find out for the first time that your trading partner never received the invoice. That expands your order to cash cycle, and that can tie up valuable cash to your organization. What we're able to do? is we're able to let you know when those events occur immediately so that you can track down and work with our support team to track down that, you know, work with our support team to track down what's happening with that particular transaction so you can be proactive and you're not finding out until it's too late, until a customer requires, you know, until, cu a, until product didn't show up at a consumer site and they're contacting you with a customer service issue because your product didn't arrive or you're not getting paid on invoices from your customer uh, because they actually never received it. We're able to help you cut back on your order to cash timelines using our reporting so that you really get so that you really get the you know the ability to be able to get to you know get to your cash quicker, provide better customer service, and overall manage your supplier and 3PL relationships more efficiently. Using a cloud-based infrastructure means we can rapidly deploy trading partners. If it's a trading partner that's in our library of over 10,000 trading partner relationships that we've mapped, that gets deployed automatically and in the same day so that you can begin testing. What's nice about that is with a traditional solution, oftentimes you're working with the provider to schedule time for someone to get onto your system to do the setup and the configuration and that may take days to weeks to be able to just do the configuration so that you can be able to start testing. If it's a trading partner, again, that's in our library of over 10,000 trading partners, it gets automatically deployed into your environment so you can begin that testing process in the same business step. That way you're not waiting around in order to be able to do business with the customer or increase the volume of business that you can do with the customer, your hands off and you're ready, rip roaring, and ready to go in the same business set. That was really the bulk of what I wanted to share with you guys today. I think at this point in time, I'll pass this back over to Ryan. And if you if you would like, please ha ask any questions that you have in the question and answer section. Um, that's at the bottom, and I think at this point in time, we can take some time to uh, answer any questions anybody on the call may have. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I see I'm presenter again. There we go. Very important that we have the visual up for our any questions slide here. So yeah, feel free to uh, to go ahead and uh, and ask questions. Um, give me just a second here. I'm going to pull up the Q A box here on my side. All right. Here's one. We have a highly customized instance of Dynamics 365. Uh, in our experience, cloud-based solutions have been fairly rigid and not able to meet our needs. How are you different? 
Uh, Steve, I'll, I'll at least take first stab at this. Um, with our managed service solution, you're really getting the best of both worlds. Uh, you're getting the scalability of mapping and communication at the network level that controls the trading partner compliance uh, and the depth of embedded integration that meet those client-specific needs uh, along with inheriting any customizations that you have for D365 um, in your environment there. So um, again, you kind of have us handling the heavy lifting when it comes to the, the, the mapping that Steve showed there in Transaction Manager, um, but then more importantly, we're able to give you that tight kind of catered, uh, that, that catered look and feel inside of Dynamics 365 using our configurable business rules. Again, something that we configure based on that business process review. And just from a technology perspective uh, and the way that we are embedded, we're also able to inherit uh, those customizations uh, that you may have with your, with your AX partner, your 365 partner. Yeah, to, fur to, further add, to further add to that, a lot of what you, a lot of what you see with kind of traditional solutions is you're managing requirements twice. You're managing requirements within your ERP system and again in a separate EDI solution. So you're really taking time to customize two different pieces and that's not a direction that you really want to be in. So the ability to be able to inherit customizations and extend AX data as we have allows us to be able to have that tight knit level of integration that allows you to be able to, you know, allows you to be able to inherit customizations and gives you leverage. If there are scenarios that you want to be able to customize, you get that functionality as a part of this. So you're not, so you're not tied, you're not tied down, and you're not mandated to do duplication of effort. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I guess kind of maybe along a, at least a, a tangential point, um, when you're talking about managing information in two different spots too, with our embedded solution, you know, think about cross-reference. When you're talking about inventory cross-reference or location cross-references and things like that, that's not something that you're having to worry about syncing up in two different spots. Because we're an embedded solution, uh, we have that right there in the 365 database as well, so we can kind of pull from when we're creating a new one, for instance, right there, the list of different things that are already in 365. We make that connection once and it's ready to go. Rather than every time you have to do something, you have to sync data between two disparate applications. Um, again, might not be applicable for customizations, but something else to think about when you're managing uh, business rules, you're managing customizations, you're managing cross-references in two different applications, you're basically doubling the amount of effort compared to something that's you know built for the cloud. Um, that cloud first strategy again, we're already in there tightly embedded in 365 and we're just connecting that out to the compliance side of our, our solution. What else? We're contemplating using an on-premise solution to meet our EDI needs because our understanding is that it has a lower TCO, total cost of ownership, and a quicker ROI regardless of the initial capital expense. How do you justify the ongoing cost of a managed service solution? That I say would probably be the most most common <laughs> question that we get here. Uh, but if we look here, uh, uh, I would have to say kind of right off the bat with our managed service fees, um, you know, mapping updates, maintenance, upgrades, all of that is included. Our monthly recurring fees are based on network traffic um, so for those trading partners that you have on a van today, you're paying for that traffic regardless, without the value of that fully managed service. So no longer do you have to maintain hardware, backups, disaster recovery, partner-specific mapping, partner-specific communication. When you take the cost of managing your infrastructure, paying for maintenance, paying for those upgrades, uh, paying each time you need to update a map, and you take your current van bill into account, not only does a cloud-based solution offer more cost-effective upfront pricing, but the total cost of ownership is actually much lower. So you know, definitely something that we'd like to follow up with, uh, you know, kind of based on your specific requirements, you know, how much time are you spending doing these, these certain tasks? Uh, what are you doing from an IT perspective if everything's moving to a cloud? That's something that we're happy to help with and something that we do really uh, on a daily basis is take a look at kind of where our clients currently are 
understand their vision for the future, and then help them kind of, A, paint that picture of how EDI fits into the fold, uh, but then more importantly, help them with that, that cost analysis. You know, if, if it does make great business sense, um, here's the different areas that we've seen, you know, substantial cost savings, and we'd be happy to share that information as a follow-up. And we have one more, and Steve, I think you hit on this really more as the transaction manager side of things. Um, how are you able to continue to function even if D365 is down? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. So what's, what's unique about a cloud-based solution is when the translation and communication are hosted, you know, are hosted by a managed service provider like True Commerce. What's nice is even if your ERP system is down, you still have access to the content that you need. The data is being queued, so it can be brought back into, into the ERP system once it's back online. But what's nice is that you, you don't, because your particular environment might be down, our cloud solution, which has a 99.99999% uptime, is going to be up and ha give you visibility to be able to see orders from your customers or transactions from your suppliers or your 3PLs for that matter. And you could print those out, you could take a look at them, you can even interact with them if you wanted to be able to acknowledge those. You know, a lot of times what we see is, you know, kind of in the, you know, at, as the economy is becoming more consumer driven and things like Amazon Prime are becoming more prevalent, a lot of times you only have a few hours or an hour to be able to acknowledge a particular transaction. You don't want to be in a position where you can't acknowledge transactions because solutions are down. So we allow you to be able to go in, see those orders, be able to interact with them so that you're not missing out on key business because your order might, because that order may be canceled if you don't respond within that certain period of time. So we're allowing you to be, to extend you, you know, extend you capabilities even while Dynamics 365 may be offline. And again, that's a worst case scenario, right? If you're hosted in Azure, you know, you're going to expect that your Dynamics 365 environment is up and is online and is functional. But from a disaster recovery plan, a traditional solution doesn't really have that. If the, if the, if the server is down that's hosting your traditional EDI solution, you're sunk. You know, with our solution, you're going to be able to go out and take a look at those transactions, be able to interact with them, process them back into Dynamics 365 when they're back online. But it's important that you're not, you know, we find it to be important that you're not missing out on business, even though there might be a hiccup in your service for Dynamics 365. Great question. Yep, and I think that's about it as far as the, the questions coming in. Um, it looks like we're going to wrap up a little bit early. It looks like you have about 15 more minutes left of your day. So, uh, again, just wanted to, to thank everyone for joining. And, Jason, I don't know if you had any other kind of closing remarks or not, just uh, more kind of shopkeeping here. But, um, again, we just really wanted to thank you guys for, for joining today. Uh, my name is Steve. Uh, my name is Ryan Hanley. Steve Norris is kind of the, the guy who is driving the demo here. Um, and feel free to, to reach out directly uh, with any other questions or comments. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we I would just add um, that we are recording today's event and. Uh, I'm We'll be uh, sharing details on that shortly as well. I want to also remind folks there is a quick survey that pops up after you leave today. Any feedback you want to share would be greatly appreciated with uh, with us, with our presenters. We always um, appreciate it if you could take just you know 15 or 20 seconds to, to fill that out. Well, uh, with that, we are ready to conclude today's event. Um, so yeah, Ryan, Steve, thank you once again, and uh, and we'll wrap things up. Thanks, everybody.